Yes, welcome back to the Shady Harbor with me, Little Fox. Yay! Good to see you. I'm just chilling right now. Um, still waiting for my meds to kick in, so I'm gonna be slow until then. But uh, yeah. 21, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Oh, yes. 21 and done. Defending? Yeah, I can use defending. Ooh. Still in the research, the daily research shit. 10 hours. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, precise. This one's got two. The uh, star precise. Ah, that's good. I've got two of them. Yep. And I'm pretty sure I've uh, researched all of the things I can. Yep. Ah, you too. I want that. I want that chick. I want a chick. I want some chimkin. Hmm. Chimkin. got 10 hours left on that one. 10 and 2 days. Two, 10 and 20 hours. Okay. Alright. So, we're done with Polymord. <clears throat> yes! I've, I've finally got... Oh, and the horse. Yes, yes. Ro 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 to you too. Pleased to see you in solitude, stranger. I'm not pleased for you to jump out at me every friggin' time I run past you. Giving myself some stamina. Hmm. Pleased to see you in solitude. Oh my gosh, Fenrock, can you fucking give it a give it a fucking rest, dude? Ready for crafting. All right. Oh, instant all research. That's going to be very useful. Hmm. Box. Box.
Let's see score. Alright, what am I up to? Oh. Really going through this. Alright, well, five days and two days. Alright. Wait, so these ones are all five days. Apart from the girdle. Sword, two days. Defend! Searching already. Okay. Whee! Ugh. Sorry, just 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 the surfing. Ye, card sharps and collectors. The roof surfing and is is aesthetically pleasing. I don't know why. Do you know how long I've been looking for you? Ugh, do you know how much I don't care that you were looking for me? Alright, uh, eleven days. Wow, 11 days, that's, that's wild. There's only one, wasn't it? Fuck. Three, two, three. Alright, cool. Oh, that's right, I also um, need to... I've got a, um... Uh, I've got my spreadsheet. I, lo I love games where I spreadsheet. Spreadsheeting is so much fun. Y'all gotta love how spreadsheets are, are a thing. Yes, I need to... Because I I, I I need to figure out who like is my who has the best um, leveling out of all of them so far. Um, yeah, I'm gonna put you next to the bank. Staying out of trouble. Wait, is that the bank? That is the bank. Sharps and collectors, test your wits and courage in a brand new card game, Tales of Tribute. Alright. Wow. Card shops. Card shops? I don't care about your card shopping. Alright. Oh, I need to. Oh my gosh, I need to. Um, I really need to uh, get some skill points, don't I? 
Alright. So we've got 50. Blacksmithing is 4. Clothing is 8. Enchanting is at... Ooh, 41. Boom. I'm doing this so I don't have to switch between them to figure out this stuff. 20? That's not bad. Provisioning is at 5. Because I can level up provisioning and alchemy really easily. But it's just everything else that's hard. It takes longer. Unless, you know, you have a friend to do that with. So, level 50. Uh, level 41 is the best out of those. Jewelry is level 20 is the best. Alright. I now have a decent idea. But yeah, I definitely do need to level up. Fish needs to level up. But before that, twenty one hours, ten hours. Around in that direction. Your I don't know. No, I didn't want to talk to you. I wanted to use the thing you were hitting. The anvil. I know words. Ten hours. Oh, okay. Oh, I should cheat again. Okay. Sabaton's impenetrable. Oh no. Sucker. No. Hey, good boy. I definitely need to make to level Bok Nuzzle's uh, alchemy and provisioning skills because they're fucking low. And he's my craft. He's my crafty boy. So, all right, this is already in the process process of uh, um. What are you, a soft robes mage? Move it. Can you? Not be a bitch. Thank you. Still waiting on the horse. My horse is amazing. Um, yeah. That's all I need to do right now, I think, on this character, except for put things in the bank. <coughs> oh, wrong place. Let's just ride my big boy. Good boy! Who's a good boy? You are. Elder Scrolls, when are you gonna start like making it, making it, um, making, giving me the ability to pet the animals? Fivefold venerations, my friend. Oh yeah, there's there, there's anti-vax hate in in the chat. Fuck yes. I am down for any hate against anti-vaxxers. Oh yeah. Go kill someone else's fucking grandparents. You fuck. I'll be back for you. 
I just, um, yeah, I had, like, I, I listened to the, what, the weirdest, um, video essay this morning talking about, like, this, 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 um, fem, femboy, um, uh, what do you call it, um, blackmailing on 4chan or some shit like that and I'm just like oh my gosh that sounds exactly like someone I've met on discord <laughs> who I got like real fucking bad vibes from a little bit spooky to be honest all right let's Speedy, my my speedy girl is a, is a, is getting super fucking fast. By the way, it's quite impressive. Ah, no wrong button. Alright, Bok, Nazul, blacksmithing, Greaves, reinforced. Good shit. Now, do uh, that one. Now we can deconstruct. Oh yeah, look at all those. So we can deconstruct all of those. Oh yeah, let's level up. Wait, can I level that up now? Oh, I need skill points. Fuck. I've got a lot of work to do today, I guess. <laughs> Alright, so, shoes. For Ten hours. Sturdy. Researchable. Good. Make it so. And then deconstruct the rest of them. More space in the bank. I'm doing terrible today. Restoration stuff. Sweet. Can't catch me, I just stole your shit. Ha! Suckers. <sighs> Feels good, man. Necklace to extract. Fucking lame. Um, no jewelry to deconstruct, alright. So, this is gonna be an interesting oh thing my, that I'm gonna have. That's pleasant. Can you not be freaky in the background? Hmm. Alright. I'm going to be bouncing around with um, some of my characters, which is going to be fun. Alright, so I need to get 
Bok Nazul, uh, their alchemy and provisioning skills up to full. But first, I just want to offload Carrie's copious collection of jewelry. Do you know what sucks? There's a, so there's a game um, called High on Life that's just come out on Xbox Game Pass, and I'm just because of the fandom around um, Five. because of the shitty fandom in uh, what, what do you call it? Um, Rick and Morty, like. It just makes me not want to any anything with uh, that those voice actors in it. Like I don't I don't want to look at it because I hate the fandom so much. It fucking sucks. Twenty. So I need to get a hundred and three worth. People are still talking about COVID in the in in the Iridian um, zone chat. That's hilarious. <sighs> All right, runs and hexes. It's time to de 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 deconstruct. Let's see, let's see what this does. I wish I could just do all... Because <laughs> I'm level 9 now, I want to see what this does. Eighty-seven of them. Eighty-seven. At level nine now, that didn't even give me a fucking full level. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. <sighs> Let's see if I can craft that much. Yeah, I'm gonna craft all of those. Not the effect I was looking for. Oh wow, that was uh, much more expensive. That was much more, sorry, not expensive, but like... Useful. Okay, I'm gonna start actually collecting some of the...
that didn't even that was awful but that did like level up my jewelry crafting really quick so but yeah <clears throat> <sighs> All right. Let's move you to the to the um jeez, I run so damn fast. I'm like sneaking right now. That's how fast I sneak. That's just how fast I sneak. That's awesome. Being a sneaky, sneaky gal. Runs in hexes. She sure do. The way I see it. Okay, I'm just gonna mark. Ooh, that one's nice. Okay, bank. Welcome. So, what I really need to do is level up to level 50 as fast as possible, basically, with this character. So... So the grind guide... Training gear for level 10 and level 30. Grind spots are Cold Harbor. Ooh, Green Shade, Alakia, Desert, or in Cleft. Um. I need to do the treasure maps as well with Polymord, or level up my um, speedy, sp speedy to um, level. To a better level. I have fun with this sort of stuff, min maxing and leveling and ah, oh, so much fun. Ugh. Ugh. Question is, what do I do first? Don't mind me, I'm just uh, formatting my uh, table here.
she's got zero. <clears throat> So it'd be good to the current level is twenty one. Cool. All right, let's put away those friggin' five swords. Venery. Oh, shut up, the old coot. All right. Um, I'm gonna actually give the alchemist surveys, put them back in the thing. Is that something gonna be useful once I've got a level 50 for the enchanting one? That's if I really want to gather, like, the best possible stuff. Just, like, hold on to that shit. Put as much of this as I can back. Switch to Bokhnazul. Put the shit I don't need back in, the, in, in that house. How do I mute? I'm new to the game, how do I mute zone chat? <laughs> what? What did I miss? In China? Wait. People are talking about genocide now, so sorry, that's very distracting. Very distracting, very confusing.
Oh my gosh. People actually people actually uh think that there's no oppression in America. Oh, the chat's like not even like on my screen here. Yes. Oh my gosh. I need to um, move my yes, my, my chat display social. How do I move it? How do I move my chat interface? It's up display chat chat. Ooh, no. Video gameplay camera. No. Interface. Gameplay? No, no. Accessibility. No. Combat. Social. Dang it. How do I move? Unlock window. How do I move it? Oh, okay, I can move it like that. That is the weirdest way to move the fucking chart I've ever seen, but okay. Okay, game, whatever. <laughs> now you can see it. Now, now at least you can kind of see the chart. So that, like, you're not just watching me. Completely lost the triad. In the house of troubles. Changed my mind. 
one day. One guy, I don't know his name, he was on a podcast. And it was in the 1990s. I have no idea what they're talking about. I'm gonna be back. I'm getting myself a drink. Okay, I, that chat is just weird now. I don't understand it. <sighs> but yeah. <sighs> Alright. Where are we going? What am I doing? My inventory is fine. And I can piss off over here. Okay. Wait, what? Contemporary bullshit advancement. Wait. Fragmented and shit. Hear ye, card sharps and collectors. Test your wits and courage in a brand new card game. Tales of Tribute. This chat is making no sense. This is funny. Sorry. Right. I'm just enjoying myself.
Anyway, I'm done with this. I'm done with this chat and this character. <laughs> fucking hell. What a fucking, what a fucking bootlicker. Holy shit. Trigger warning bootlicker, boot, bootlicker chat. My gosh. Oh. Average ESO player, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, the average ESO player is pretty freaking like, good. Like, decent, but suddenly, like, freaking... <laughs> like, I, I... See, I have, I have, I have a problem. I can't not interact with chats. Like, I, I just, I see something, I'm just like... Someone says something like, um, America, like, fought in two world wars to, to, to fight, um... To fight fascism, and I'm like... Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh, <laughs> uh, are you fucking kidding me right now? Like, how much, how, how much of the boot do you want to fucking lick? Holy shit. She says, as she plays, what is effectively Race War, the game. Uh, fucking hell, though. Gee whiz. Holy heck in a handbasket. Alright, um, I want to deposit all the things that I don't want in my inventory, which is these. Uh, definitely want those. Oh, can I withdraw anything from here? Oh. Spoiled food? Okay. Oh, I, I, I shall take the spoiled food. Um... Sorry, I'm doing I'm doing the everyone's favorite thing in Elder Scrolls, uh, which is inventory management, and I'm doing that across four characters right now. So exciting! Right, withdraw that. Wait, no, I was depositing first. Ah! I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. Oh, I've ran out of space in my inventory, in, in my bank. Oh, fuck. Right. Oh, all right. Yes, me lord. More work. My average is uh, mentally stable and ill. Praying, you for you, praying for you, hope you seek treatment. <laughs> Inshallah. Uh... I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah. How was your day today? I do love the chat though. The chat is the chat is mm, it's just it's just, it's pretty it's pretty nice. I, I like it. Hear ye, card sharps and collectors. Where I, I started running somewhere. I don't remember what it was running for. Oh yeah, that's right. That's where I'm going. <sighs> I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. Woo! I'm just uh, putting crap away because you don't have infant or infant banking, I suppose. Um, buddy, why? Okay, fine. I'll walk there. Fine, the magic didn't work, and I'll walk. I've been looking for you? I don't- do you know how much I don't care, Stuga? <sighs> Pudge Nugget. Oh, hey! Oh, you were trying to troll me before? I thought you were trying to be friendly. Lol. Hope Sunday you will punish yourself as hard as you can. Like, you can't even, like, spell the word correctly. What's a trainee? What, what's a trainee, dude? Can you explain to me? I'm, 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 too, me I'm too mentally unstable and too mentally, mentally ill to understand uh, what you're trying to say now. Sorry. Ma image, image being friendly to trainee. Uh, the only one who will be punished is you before God. 
Well, I mean, like, the problem with that is that my god's better than yours, and my god can beat you up, like, beat your god up, because, you know, he's more powerful. And my source is because, you know, that's my religion, bro. Don't try and, uh, don't try and, uh, hurt me with that one. His double is moderated. Double N is moderated. So, like, what's your excuse for the, your other spelling mistakes? Should have gone with the English as a single, second language, my dude. But yeah, like, why do people think that, like, that go into a, um, why do people go into, like, a channel, uh, for a transgender person who constantly streams, constantly talks about politics, and they think that somehow trolling on the basis of being transgender is going to, like, give you emotional damage or something? Like come up with something better are you really gonna just do the one joke for being something like this just look at you yeah i do every morning well ask 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 your dad as he's going down on me in the morning hmm mad that's a good comeback not as good as the come I scrape back off your mother's teeth though. Uh, okay. You, you oh cool. All right. I mean, whatever gift gets you off, I guess. This is fun, but um, cool. I mean, you can. You can believe that if you like. That's cool. I, I don't really mind. I'm gonna keep doing my thing. I'm red. M my dude. My dude. I got something to tell you about this. I, I, I literally have lighting that makes my face red. So like, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. Like, L, I guess. Anyway, try harder. This is like the most lowest effort troll ever. <sighs> I'm sorry, that wasn't you. That was me actually being tired. Did I put away everything? Ah. Yes. Pray Allah, inshallah, my brother. Yeah, I see my endo in January, and uh, we'll um, make sure that uh, my treatment goes smoothly. Thank you. Put it all away. Is that it though? Was that the was was that literally the best you had? Or are you gonna like come up with something original that I haven't heard before? <laughs> ha ha ha! You're trans. Ha ha ha! You mad? Like that's like I guess twelve year old insults. Pray Allah. Yeah. Do you think that like I have a problem with Allah? Is that is that your thing? I mean, you can believe in a god that um, sends people to hell if you like. I choose to believe in a god that beats up your god and doesn't send people to hell. So, sounds like my god's better than yours. Um. Okay. I mean, no, I won't though. I just, I, I, I. I won't though because my god's gonna beat up your god 
before that happens. Like, you need to understand that. Welcome to the band You're, of Dagobah. Just say <laughs> reactions! <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> okay. Uh, there is no, no, there isn't. I see, see, like I, I, I have my own god because that's my religion, bruh. That's my religion, bruh. And my god beats up your god because my god's more powerful because of you know, like the fact that he's my god. No, 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 no. My god is more. No, my god is more powerful than Allah. He beat the shit out of Allah. And um, I'll, and then like you know, my God will allow you and everyone else to go to heaven because my God's better than yours. My religion is sick like you. Well, I mean, my my religion is just better, and so like be because because you know it's my religion. I mean, prove my religion wrong. Prove that my God doesn't exist. See, my God is like super super like Chad God and uh, beats up your god and like puts everyone in heaven because like you know my god cares about and loves people like re like like a god should <laughs> oh cope and seethe this is amazing anything new like you, you you've moved on to the daddy shit what's next Mental disease, huh? Um, you know that you don't that that you can't catch the gay, right? Seems weird that you that that you would say things like that as if you had no idea how mental health worked. But it's okay. You still think that your god is like the only god when my god is is currently like laying your god down over the couch and just taking them, railing your god from behind. Because my god's better than your god. I mean, if he isn't, then just prove me wrong. Oh, okay. It's, it's not. Okay. Cool. But wonderful, wonderful, amazing, amazing levels of uh, argumentative uh, ability here. The Quran exists, yeah. Um, no, I won't, because my God will, like I said, my God will beat up Allah and um, send me to heaven with everyone else. Like for you as well, my God's going to beat up all of the other gods, um, and then everyone gets to go to heaven, because my God actually cares about people. Inshallah, my brother. Hope demons will leave you. I don't have any demons, because my god doesn't let me have demons. So, cool. I, I don't know. I just find it wild that you would believe in a god that's going to send people to hell. Sounds like your god's pretty shit. You should believe in my god. My god's better, because he'll beat up your god. And won't let anyone go to hell. So, answer for your sins. Like, my, my god will, like, um, teach people how to live better. In heaven, so yeah. <sighs> oh, um, cool. I don't know how to, I don't know what to say to that, I guess. I guess I'll run it through a translator, figure out what it is. It's probably something normal, like, um, praise God. Inshallah, my brother. Inshallah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Fucking prey. What is this one? This one is you weak bastard. Okay. 
It's so like you could have told that you could have typed that out in English, so I don't I understand. You can cry, you can run for it, you may believe no, but you un, you don't understand. I believe in my God. My God's just better than yours. Oh, they they they're just trying to troll me, which is fucking hilarious because I love trolls. <laughs> I love trolls because it gives me it gives me something to talk about. <laughs> People get so mad that I exist and that I'm talking on the internet, but they, but honestly, what I think it is, is they are, they currently have their pants down around their knees, they're typing with one hand, um, and thinking about how um, sad and angry that um, I'm going to be when I'm off camera. Um, oh, no, 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 I'm not saying that you're mad. Uh, like, uh, I mean, like, it, it's obvious that you get upset when I uh, tell you that my god is, uh, like, fucking your, fucking Allah over the couch, but, um, uh, yeah. Ich, uh, yeah, okay, cool. Oh, my gosh. I'm gonna have to, like, put a rule in chat to post in English. Uh, cool. Oh, okay. Cool. How dare I? How dare Allah not not get down on his knees for my God? Because my God's better than 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 yours. And if that's not true, then prove that my God doesn't exist, and uh, I shall concede. If your God is so fucking weak that he has to send people to 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 like some sort of eternal torment. Um, yeah, this is, this, and, and you're telling me you're not mad when I say those things. Like, that's, that's what's hilarious. That's what you respond to the most. Uh-huh. Okay. Cool. Oh, yeah, God, God, Allah is absolutely righteous, especially when he gets down on his knees for, uh, my God. Because, you know, Allah can't even, like, can't even find it within his heart to, uh, teach his children um, the right ways, uh, all he can do is punish. So, yeah, that, that sounds like a shitty god to me. <sighs> Why are you making fun of your god? Because it's funny. It's funny and it's irrelevant that you're bringing up god and, like, it, to try and troll me. I find it funny. I mean, if you're going to come into my chat and try and troll for your own amusement, I'm going to try and get my own amusement from, from like, you. Like, it's only fair. Uh-huh. Yeah. Allahu Akbar. Absolutely. God is great. But my, my God is better. <laughs> uh-huh okay i mean my god's still better than yours what at the i think i think you you you're so su you're such a pussy that you'll just put random things um, into my chat, hoping that I'll ban you just because you're saying innocuous things in another language. That's fucking hilarious. Um, no, I won't. I just told you why. Because my god is better than your god. My god will beat the shit out. Of my god will beat the shit out of your god and won't let let me be punished. So, cool. Um, what's next? Mm-hmm. <sighs> oh, yeah. Um, I think I'm done with this. I'm just going to check how many skill points I have and just put, pop down my level. <sighs> Uh-huh. 
Hey yo. Don't be putting on don't be putting uh, links in my chat if you're a troll. Just just a 600 second time out there for ya. Oh fuck yes, I love pork. Yeah. Mm. Delicious. I ate it off your mum's belly button. Given up? Oh. Oh well. Guess that's as far as uh, you're willing to uh, go, really. Okay. Damn. Didn't even know what that link was. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's basically the rules. If I ask you not to do something in my chat and you do it, I'm just going to ban you or time you out. So. Like, I mean, that's what you're wanting, right? That's why you got one hand on the keyboard. You want me to ban you so you can, like, fucking calm. Because I can't think of anything else that you... That, any any other reason that you would uh, enjoy being cucked by, by me. And you come into my chat to try and troll me and fail so miserably. I guess, I guess you just enjoy, like, the thing. Before death, you will remember only one name. Oh, okay. Bye. Next? Or is that it? Was that it? Only three trolls. Lame. <laughs> and they thought that I then they thought they would actually click on their links. Oh well. Anyways. Oh, shit. Um, now that they're gone, it's time for me to... What was it? Like, cry. Yeah, that's right. To start crying. Because I'm so, like, emotionally damaged by their, um... Lower for trolling. <sighs> Alright. Now. I can't even remember what I was doing in the game. Oh, yeah, I was going to put some money in the, in the bank. Welcome to the Bank of Daggerfall. Deposit my coins. <sighs> That's weird though, like, I, I, I don't, I, I don't really get it. I don't really understand the point really though. It was that, of all the things that you could try to attack someone who is obviously political and openly transgender and openly a woman on the internet, with a face cam, like, showing my entire body, like, and, and then, and see how long I've been streaming for and think that attacking me directly for, for just being just for being transgender is going to affect me in any way i just find that really interesting like is it because of a lack of caring um not like oh i oh they don't care about me i don't it's not that it's like is it just is it just low effort trolling or is there some sort of script that people work off of I don't know, like, uh, it's just, to me, it's like, it's derivative. It's like um, Hitler's paintings, that they, they, they have absolutely no depth to them. <laughs> I 
Oh well. I guess they'll beat themselves off until they fall asleep at night and then um, apologize uh, crying to uh, Allah for it. But yeah, it is kind of shitty that people believe in gods that um, want to punish people for um, not following arbitrary rules. That seems dumb to me. Um, yeah, then, you know, the god I believe in doesn't do that, so he's better. You cannot believe the same things I do, that's cool. But I'm allowed to believe in what I believe. Alright. Did I write down what I needed to write down? I did not. Fuck. No, he had four. He had four skill points since level 30. to do now. Might move on to um, what I was planning on talking about. Turn you down. And move on to Project Cybersyn. This is something that um, someone um, uh, that uh, I think done randomly, or I can't remember what their new um, username is, but uh, they uh, shared with me on the on the Discord, which is pretty cool. Um, so let's have a look at that. <sighs> da da da. What happened when I got to Chile and took over this uh, team? Let us look at a little diagram to show how I set about things. I built it up on a piece of paper lying on the table between us. Then a system three and a system four, and I got that far. And then I got to system five, and I drew a, a big histrionic breath. And I said, I was going to say, this compañero presidente is you, before I could say it. He suddenly smiled very broadly, and he said, Ah, System 5, at last, the people. The people, people at last, the people. What you've clicked on here is a short story. It's a true story, not too long past, about a future trapped in the past. There are those things you hope for in a good story, drama, plots, heroes, sages, our better angels and bitter devils. But, and I'll spoil this for you, it's a tragedy. Though it would be more of a tragedy that it remained history. It's undeniably the history of our present this friction-free present, a planetary network of automated machines, of one government with a face and one without. A fantastical assemblage of networks, profits, control, consciousnesses, and behind it all something faceless, but something we know is woven through it. The front is impressive, smiling, controlling. As far as logistical operations go, today's cybernetic systems are peerless. They've conquered time and space. Amazon is amazing at delivering. In total, it's a cybernetic organism, each component tuned and regulated for a single purpose, the fast, frictionless domination of space and time from desire to delivery. There is, of course, a price, not this price, but this one, an organic cost by which any inefficient human output is a hindrance. 
I think the I think the problem with this intro is that it's spending far, far, far too long um, meandering around the point. Um, like, really should have started with like an actual introduction into like this is what I'm talking about. Um, this is the definition, and then start going through like the cool introduction stuff because this is just confusing the point. I think. I, I honestly am not exact entirely sure what this documentary is about so far, but it sounds cool. An alien quantity to the machine's purpose. People were receiving disciplinaries for taking toilet breaks. The productivity targets were so um, high that workers were afraid to go to the bathroom. I mean, one afternoon walking walking around the you know the top floor of this huge warehouse, and yeah, I, I found an empty Coca-Cola bottle with with urine in it on the shelf. You know, yellow liquid smelt it. It's, it's very clear straight away what it is. Order pickers were afraid to use the bathrooms because. Um, of the productivity targets. We have all around us in bright, colorful typefaces. That is something that I've experienced a lot um, in my in my my ver various uh, jobs that I've lived in. Is like toilet breaks is such a frick fucking um, stickler for the for um, uh, all of these people. It's just mm, it bothers me so much that. Uh, we, the, that that um, toilet breaks are so policed. I just feel like if they weren't so policed, then we wouldn't have as much of a problem with them. So I have a problem with toilet breaks because of my lack of um, uh, the concept of time is very hard. Like the passing of time, I, I don't really uh, don't really experience that as well as other people so i i'll sit down in the toilet and like it'll be like longer than i think it is in there like unless i actually set a timer or something like that i have i i have no idea how long i've spent in there until i leave <laughs> and that if i don't have like a watch i mean like this is why i have um you know external external prosthesis as as uh which is the cool word for just you know a phone is <laughs> the basis of cybernetic control and behind those faces are a few people making a lot of profit and a lot of other people doing everything else. These are capitalism's greatest success stories. The happy ending, unparalleled speed and efficiency have made these artificial organisms virtually indispensable. They have increasing sway over our lives. Meanwhile, those who supposedly give us sway at all in this world don't do much. When's the last time you had to contact your government? How was that experience? I spent six hours on hold and then waited six months for a response that was supposed to take a day. Conversely, if I need help from Amazon, I can get it in 48 hours, guaranteed. And they welcome my feedback. The juxtaposition gets me to thinking, why is Amazon so good at what it does, as far as their customers are concerned, anyway? And government bureaucracies are so bad at what they do. Namely, what? responsiveness to the people who they nominally I, I don't know what what you're talking about. Like I find that I find that there's a performative um, sense of um, uh, customer service when it comes to these country companies. They're very good at uh, making you feel like you're being listened to while actually not doing anything at all because of the way that they've structured the systems in order to avoid having to have any form of uh, responsibility. They hire people who can who have a have a set amount of things that they're allowed to do, and then if anything outside of that, they'll either try and push you onto someone else, or they'll shut you down if they can. It's drawn out. It's not a not something that they. It's not so much welcoming criticism. Criticism is fine to welcome. The point is that they don't have to do anything with criticism. They just have to look as though they're taking it. That's the fucking bullshit. They represent. Leftists, for their part, pride themselves on having good political imaginations. They can imagine the utopias of universal benefits or even classless societies. Though, for most of us, I should think we'd be contented by a functioning government, one capable of representing public interest at all. Why is it that those who represent us are unable to prioritize what these private economies do every single day? Responsiveness in place of bureaucracy, what? effective feedback, Adaptation no. to changing conditions. Two-day delivery on what's promised. What What are you talking about? Like, none of this is, like... Like, that comes... Like, and all of those things are either performative or come at the cost of um, people's, like, lives and shit. 
What the fuck? A functional government that serves people couldn't actually be a novel idea in the 21st century, could it? Turns out, it was an idea, not just in theory, either. No, no, this was planned, built, and operational. A national economy relying on the communication between human beings and intelligent machines. A utopian dream for which the concrete was already poured and the cables already in the ground. So, if this happened, and if it really was so great, where is it? Where's our democratic socialist utopia? Where's this magic land? And if it was for real, then what the hell happened to it? September 11, okay. Oh, Chile. Oh, that September 11, okay. So that, that, that was the uh, CIA coup in uh, Chile, by the way, September 11. This was, in the end, it's true, a lost cause. But in defense of lost causes, it demonstrates possibilities. Again, again, like you're showing me things and they're talking around the topic in a way that makes it very hard for the average person to actually understand what you're talking about. Like, I understand that I'm doing two things at once, or three things at once. Try listening trying to uh, provide commentary and playing games, but still these pieces are very fluid and they're not really coming together as a cohesive whole yet. I that really hope that it gets better. Oh, we're still in the intro. Okay, good. The technology and intelligent machines can be put to other ends. Like you yeah. haven't you haven't really drawn the line between like how um, the, the communication between humans and machines um, interacts with um, Amazon apparently being an amazing um, company, which it really isn't. All of these companies have a appearance of being amazing companies, but they they are not amazing companies. In reality, it it is an appearance of these things <sighs> just yeah it kind of that kind of bums me out to to be perfect to, to be to be honest about it and like it's just like mm. <sighs> ends of people rather Irks than me. the ends of profit and at the same time it serves as a warning of the lengths to which the status quo will go to maintain <sighs> itself kidnapping sabotage terrorism and public execution to abort this future before it had the chance to be born what future are you talking about fucking hell cyber socialism okay explain it please Cybernetics and socialism are both methods for understanding systems and their goals. They do not often appear together as they do here, and they are both popularly misunderstood. But it turns out they make quite an inspiring amalgam. Cybernetics offers models for understanding processes that are too complicated to model in terms of linear cause and effect. And as a method, it has often inspired theorists of various disciplines to interpret their objects of study in new ways whether those objects are machines, bodies, minds, or even social systems, like an economy. We have various uses for cybernetics as a prefix that are sometimes misleading when it comes to its meaning, which in its modern form was popularized by theorist Norbert Wiener. For Wiener, cybernetic systems are characterized by feedback and control, and they use feedback loops with their environments, which adapt to new information so they can accomplish a predetermined goal. Such machines are found all around us, if you know where to look. Thermostats and temperature governors, automated self-guided missiles, video recommending algorithms, and the vestibular system of cyborgs. Huh? Where, where was I hate-rated? Hate oh, yeah. Oh, only by, like, uh, three people, but it was super low effort. Super low effort. All they did was attack um, attack my... Um, uh, the, me being transgender and um and uh said, tell me that uh, Allah would um would uh, punish me um but, but all i needed to do was respond with my god's better than yours and they 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 lost their fucking minds it was amazing 
Uh, and then they got bored and um and uh pressured me into banning them. So cool. One of them is uh isn't banned, uh so they're only on a timeout, so they might show up later. I'm sure you never knew that you were trans and that some people's gods apparently hate you. Well, I mean, my my gods my gods better than their god because my god will like beat up all the other gods and and um, help everyone get into heaven. You know, like fuck the hierarchy, smash through it. My god's better than yours. Prove my, prove that my god doesn't exist and I'll shut up and I'll shut up about it. <laughs> Including our bodies. We can stay upright only by a synthesis of inputs. In our case, <laughs> our eyes, the limbs, yeah. and inner ear. Oh, apparently I'm also crying right now because because they because I'm so mad. <laughs> like literally, they did the they did the you mad you mad oh you mad. It was fucking. It was like ah, you're like thirteen. <laughs> oh, I feel bad for bullying them. They're obviously not that smart. In each instance, live incoming information controls how the system behaves in real time, allowing a thermostat to maintain the temperature of a space, a missile that self-adjusts to hit a moving target, for a video site to recommend videos that you'll actually click on, or for your body to stay upright while being knocked around. When we use the word control, many tend to think of autocratic control as orders given in a military hierarchy. But when it comes to cybernetics or cyber socialism, we don't mean autocratic control, but automatic control. Rather than giving orders top down, all of these control systems receive live information from their environments and adjust their decisions in real time. Just as it would be strange to suggest that your brain rules your body, it would be similarly strange to suggest that a government rules its people. These are not distinct, as the existence of one persists only by the healthy operations of the yeah. other. Let me tell you what happened when I first explained it to President Allende himself. Allende was a doctor, a medical doctor, as you may know. And therefore, it was very easy to explain the model to him in terms of neuro-cybernetics as the way of controlling the body. And it's no mere coincidence that cybernetic and governance are derived from the same Greek word, kubernau, to steer. Reciprocal steering is the animating principle of cyber socialism. And for socialists like Allende, governance is only legitimate insofar as it is steered by the will of the people. And in turn, reciprocally, those entrusted to govern are capable of organizing much larger, more complex, even statewide projects that steer individuals' energy and ability towards ends that benefit all, ends that can never be accomplished by atomized individuals acting on their own. Hmm. Las grandes empresas transnacionales no solo atentan contra los intereses genuinos de los países en desarrollo, sino que su acción avasalladora e incontrolada se da también en los países industrializados donde se asientan. Based. <laughs> I saw that. Whereas Wiener was the father of cybernetics, Stafford Beer would come to be known as the father of management cybernetics. Before arriving in Chile, Beer was a corporate consultant, a well-compensated handshaker of the elite managerial class while cruising around in his Rolls Royce. He worked for the steel and publishing industries, among others. After the events of Chile 1973, the one-time darling of corporate capital would say this. Allende was very successful. Now, the whole of the rich world were being told that he was a disaster, that his policies would be inflationary and all the rest of it. I have never seen a more misrepresented thing in the media in all my life. It was outrageous. And of course, had every... You know, what, about, what about the media's treatment of uh, Elon Musk? That's pretty crazy. Oh, 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 oh I gotta, gotta show you this. This is, this is brilliant. I love this. Um, this. This is amazing. Oh, this is so fucking amazing. I just need to see this. Check this out. I reckon Dave Chappelle bring, brings Elon Musk on stage and everyone boos. Oh no, sorry, 10% of them booed. <laughs> okay, Elon. His whole business model is fuck Earth, and I'm leaving anyway. Who 
<laughs> and he tried to say they're a far left crowd. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I was booed for the server. Thank you. Amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Also, also, uh, I gotta find this. Uh, this, this is a thing that happened. Uh, no, no, no. Where is it? Oh, here we go. Found it. Jordan. Dr. Peterson. Wait, what? Oh, they might have done an update. They might need an update. Game options. Check for updates. Or just don't do anything, alright? Sorry, I just need to reset the game. Um, yeah, Jordan, 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 Jordan. Uh, this is a tweet from Dr. Jordan C. Peter, uh, B. Peterson, um, in replying to Robert Reich. Elon Musk uh, and his enablers have turned this website into a torrent of ad hominem attacks, lies floated as jokes, and blatant misinformation. This isn't freedom of speech, it's just dangerous. And in reply, it, and quote tweeted by Dr. Jordan B. Peterson with his own... <laughs> And it's just, and it's getting just impossible to find child porn, dot, 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 smiley face. The only thing that could make that worse is if he put a winky smiley face on that fucking ship. Holy crap, that's bad. Oh, wow. And I'm going to leave you with that while I go for a quick break. Uh, don't go anywhere or do either way, though. I'll be right back after I go to the loo.
And I'm back! Awesome, I'm back from crying over being trolled earlier. And we can continue. Alright, at some point as well, um, I'm getting my car service, so they're apparently going to be here between 9.30 and 10. I don't know how punctual they are, so I'll have to keep the ear open for that. <laughs> Let us continue learning about this very... Very, um, convoluted, um, documentary. political motive because this was the first democratically elected Marxist in the history of man. Beer would renounce his former luxurious lifestyle, retreating to a remote cabin in Wales, becoming something of a cybernetics guru. Before meeting Stafford Beer, Salvador Allende had probably never heard of cybernetics, but some of his younger staffers had, including Fernando Flores, who was a young engineer and political activist in Unidad Popular a leftist coalition of social democrats, communists, and anarchists that won Chile's 1970 election, beating right. out the centrist Christian Democrat Party and the right-wing National Party. Flores had been inspired by Beer's ideas and saw in his writings a potential path for Chilean socialism to progress, one based not on autocratic control, but on cybernetic control. First, by creating direct communication loops between This is like, this is like what I, exactly the sort of thing I was thinking about when I was learning about, um, AVI philosophy. <clears throat> so you got, um, <clears throat> what AGI is, it's, it, it's, it's, um, artificial general intelligence is the idea, it's, it's the, you know, self, self, um, it's the, it's, it's the kind of AI that, uh, people are all scared about, you know, like, AI that can think for itself. And so, <clears throat> AGI philosophy is what scientists like, or philosoph scientific philosophers, I guess you call them, <clears throat> um, use as a philosophy to think about ways to avoid, you know, like huge problems in the future with um, creating these AIs and the ramification from the way we, the, just the way we program these things. And I remember watching one video and was talking about how corporations work very similarly to this. And like, this seems like cyber socialism is bringing those ideas together, which is really interesting to me. Government agencies and the country's resource extraction and manufacturing sectors. If only in the mind of Flores, cyber socialism had been conceived. Hmm. The challenge of ideas. The conflict itself, how can it be defined? Well, let's look at it this way. The communist bloc would like to see the entire world under communist domination. They have begun to talk more and more about their ability to win from us in the arena of ideas. This, of course, is fine with us. For the marketplace of ideas! We great faith in our ideas. The ideas that have moved mountains and created wealth and shaped us as free men. Free and men. we are confident yeah. okay. that history can do no other than award us the victory. It literally a pyramid. In which ideas are <laughs> Literally draws a pyramid. Okay. Indeed had some ideas. In his Sorry. bipolar world, <laughs> socialism conjured up images of violent confirmed. overthrow, property seizure, and executions. And, well, autocratic control. He believed there could be a new way. Aquí se siente la historia. Yeah. Chilean socialism Based. would not include servitude to American corporate interests, nor a Soviet-styled bureaucracy, nor armed insurrection, as was accomplished in Cuba. He believed that socialist revolution could occur democratically in Chile, within the existing ah. legal framework and without violence. He ah. dreamed of a uniquely Chilean revolution, a chill revolution, one of red wine and empanadas. Allende's idea, and the platform on which he was elected, was that the government should serve the needs of the people, 
particularly that the profit earned from Chile's natural resources should remain in Chile to produce consumer goods that would be of use to Chileans. Yeah. His challenge was not one of ideas, but of production and ownership. The first step to accomplishing this was for the Chilean government to purchase, yes, purchase, legally, the mines, factories, and banks already operating in Chile from their foreign owners, so that the future profits from these industries would not disappear overseas, but rather that they would remain in Chile's national economy. Hardly a radical idea, but a Chile for Chileans would be the cause for which Allende would give his life three years later. Here's where cybernetic feedback comes in. Managing a whole network of resources, labor, and production from government offices in the capital would be very difficult. It would require a massive government bureaucracy, which as we still know today are colossally inefficient. I would really, really love to have, whenever someone says that uh, government bu bureaucracy is inefficient, I really, really, really want that claim to be substantiated by something other than the free market works better. Like, what is inef what does inefficiency mean to you? Are we talking about cost? Because yes, running a com running a country better costs more. <clears throat> the Flores had an idea. What if they introduced cybernetic feedback into their centralized system? Then information could be received and acted upon in real time. For example, if there were raw materials backed up at one smelter, they could send it to another smelter with less on their plate before it caused so disruption. So like corporation. Or again, if there were raw materials stacked up somewhere, transportation could be diverted to a factory where they could be turned into consumer products. The entire production line could, in theory, work on automatic feedback. If resource extraction, refineries, factories, and transport were all directed from a centralized computing center, hmm. these nodes would run on their own most of the time, with the control center stepping in only when important decisions had to be made or if something went wrong. Mm -hmm. In 1970, this was nothing more than a thought experiment. The technology for it did not exist yet, anywhere, though we see its legacy everywhere today. This is why the project was so ingenious. Not only did they theorize it, but they had to build it from the limited resources they had available to them. There were only four mainframe computers in the entire country at the time. In 1971, Flores hired Beer, one of the world's leading cyberneticians, to consult on the implementation of this grand idea, to develop the technologies required to make it happen, and eventually to run the whole Chilean national economy. Beer agreed, having only a vague idea of what he was getting into. And then I suddenly got a letter which very much changed my life. It was from the technical general manager of the State Planning Board of Chile. Remember, 1971, President Allende... The invent you don't understand the invent internet invention, but think it's cool that they have smart people doing that? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know, like, this is... This is what... Like, this is what... Um, this, is, this is centralized government. This is what centralized government does. Why can't British people say Spanish words? It's because they talk funky, innit? Welcome back, Happy Puritan. You missed you missed the uh, you missed the frenzy. Yeah, no one no one talk right. Oh, some people tried to troll again. It was awesome. You would have hated it. I told them that my god was better. ...was in office. He uh, remarked in this letter uh, that he had studied all my works, he had collected a team of scientists together, and would I please come and take it over? Uh, I could hardly believe it, as you can imagine. Over the next two years, Flores and Beer put together an international team of engineers, programmers and designers which would come to be known as project forgive me if i'm wrong but this is also something that was being done within the soviet union at the same time right project cybersyn or cinco it was planned to have five parts most of which had already reached this is what you should have said 20 minutes ago <laughs> i'm sorry that intro introduction was terrible now i understand what you're talking about by the time of the military coup 
20 minutes First in, now I understand center. what the whole thing Inspired is about. Inspired okay. by German industrial design, this futuristic room would be the globally recognized. Yeah, the space internet of was an important important tool, but the, the, they're describing one of the one of the functions of a centralized government when it comes to organizing um, um, resources and uh, production. Like they're, 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 this is just one part of centralized government. The futuristic socialism, hmm. and remains today the image of this lost future. Lost future. Cybernet. And I'm sorry. It never went away. It got overtaken, and you. It it was so good that um, corporations now use um, the, the the centralized government, or I guess cyber socialism, to uh, run companies. Network made up of computers, telephone cables, and telex machines that connected nodes such as the nationalized factories to the control center, allowing them to communicate. This was to be the information backbone of this cybernetic system. Checo, the Chilean economic simulator, which would use a variety of economic indices and variables, which could predict how these variables could interact if they were changed. This would allow policymakers to play with economic models in advance of making decisions. Cyberstride, this was the software, new programs written from scratch that could synthesize data, such as information about factory input and output. Yeah. The Chileans hired a British firm to help out with the code, as there were too few computer scientists in Chile at the time, and too few computers. And finally, Cyberfolk. Cyberfolk was not implemented in the two years of Cybersyn's existence, but was proposed by Beer as a method to gather data on workers' self-reported happiness, anonymously. This would allow for the control center to react, intervene, or direct resources to locales that were unhappy. Direct feedback to your elected officials. This was at least the dream, the future hoped for. At least that these parts would continue operating towards collective ends. We do have modern equivalents, profit-driven equivalents, to each of Cybersyn's components. Ubiquitous networked computing via the internet, the creation of which it should be noted was not for profit. Various governments and researchers use economic simulators, and it's spawned a whole industry in the financial and investment sectors. There are also innumerable algorithms that make large data sets useful. Even feedback and rating systems, private feedback anyway, on the products we buy or the content we think is worth watching. <clears throat> so really, 50 years later, none of what the CyberSyn project invented is alien to us. What's astonishing is that the CyberSyn team conceived, built, and designed each of these independently, together and often did so with rudimentary technologies as they were being blockaded <coughs> and sabotaged by the United States government and the CIA, cut off from many of the world's best computer scientists, technologies, and component parts. Furthermore, this was already decades before we would see private corporations use online platforms for the same purposes to their own ends. Despite the apparent similarities, however, we should not confuse Cybersyn with something like a proto-Amazon, particularly because of Beer's proposed system, Project Cyberfolk. As a socialist idea, this whole apparatus would be at odds with its goal if it did not incorporate the people into the production process, something our modern, private, cybernetic systems never do, as their only interest insofar as workers are concerned is the lowest well yeah no but like that you're looking at the end result and not looking at how the systems can be used in different ways possible wage for the most possible work feedback yeah. via you're just cyber changing the goals it's just changing the goals uh, using the same systems like information from around the country on happiness using a simple binary choice are you happy or unhappy unlike our modern data collection systems beer immediately recognized the importance of anonymity Thus, he designed feedback via cyberfolk to be anonymized, such that only the averages of terminal inputs could be seen by the government. The threat of autocratic control was made functionally impossible in the way the system was designed, but policymakers could see where their attention was needed. Allende did not want automation to replace workers. Rather, he wanted workers to have control of their workplace, something that yeah. new technology could enable. At the same time, another problem with centralized economies was solved. That is, that people lie when they're afraid of losing their jobs, even due to circumstances beyond their control. A widespread problem in centrally planned economies, notably that of the Soviet Union at the time, was a production quota system. With a quota, a factory is expected to produce a set number of goods, regardless of disruptions in the production line. If there is a disruption and something goes wrong, factory managers are incentivized to lie to the central agencies about output to avoid the blowback coming back on them. The problem here is too many interests. Interests to oversee, 
interests to report to, and feared that negative results would reflect back on individuals. A disinterested, computerized system, on the other hand, allows the control center to oversee inputs and outputs in real time and respond to disruptions before they can impact the production line. Allende's program worked. By the end of 1971, Chile's GDP was up 7.7%. Production was up 13.7%. Consumption was up 11.6%. With the whole economy on the upswing, oh still the most important. Like, this is interesting as well. Like, looking at GDP, production, consumption, real wages, like, is one thing, but you should, you should also look at, um, you know, like, the public public health um and uh, benefits to the public uh, and the people as well but like i i guess i guess we're doing a comparison between socialism uh, from a, ca a capitalistic lens so i guess it makes sense to use those sort of figures but like yeah it's uh good in every Corbett every single way Allende was the real wages of chilean workers which had increased by a massive 30 percent well yeah Allende's and when wages increase so does consumption soared and he was on track for a majority government with over half the country's votes in the next election. Mm -hmm. That election would not take place. Nope. In fact, he would be the last democratically elected president in Chile for the next 20 years. Yep, and um, that would uh, be, I believe that that was when my uh, ex's um, father and um, brother um had to escape i think that her brother got uh, shot uh during escaping chile yeah Woo! fucking yeah hmm. chile's nationalized economy the communications networks the control center worker feedback as well as an economic simulator all run by computers was one of the most ambitious socialist projects ever conceived and solved problems we have yet <laughs> to solve it just got decades. personal Unlike the cyber that was my team, ex, however, though. we wouldn't even have to invent anything new to realize it. It would require little more than a change in the way technologies are used. Absolutely to turn them zero uh, positive feelings rather than towards her. being run solely to maximize the private profits of so, a few individuals at the top of the of corporations. This is fundamentally a question of design, the design of systems, and the goals they are given in the generation of a future. I say to every American, let us raise our spirits. Let us raise our sights. Let all of us contribute all we can to this great and good country that has contributed so much to the progress of mankind. What did you, have you said anything wrong with regard to the uh, ITT in Chile? How did you handle just that? got uh, personal. Did, dealt with that today. Well, they did. Yes, sir. What did they do? Deny it? Uh, they uh, denied it, uh, but they were cautious on how they dealt with the Corey statement because they were afraid that might backfire. Why would Corey say? Well, Corey said that he had received instructions uh, uh, to uh, do anything short of uh, uh, a Dominican-type uh, Alleged to have said that. Or he did? Right. It was a report contained in an IT and T um, oh, yeah. thing, but well, he was. He was instructed to. Well, but I hope everybody just failed. Some <laughs> that's his main problem. They should have kept all young from getting in. Yay, Nixon! Cybersyn was ambitious innovative, and appeared to be accomplishing the material goals Allende, Flores, and Beer had set out for it. Yet it was stormed by soldiers. Yeah, like a, sci a scientific uh, approach to, like, a scientific um, uh, materialistic approach to um, real world problems to find solutions is always going to work better than praying to the god of the invisible hand. Shut down in September 1973. What happened here? Well, let's go back to Allende's election campaign. A Chile you insulted for the American religion of capitalism. Not That's everyone what agreed happened. with this platform. There were other forces at work in Chile. Big, wealthy, imperialistic forces. Yes. It would be agreed. Well, when you when when you give when you give power to the people, you necessarily have to take the power away from the hegemonic uh, power structures um, that that are exist in within existence. 
the the violent the religious radicals yeah capitalists they're the most violent uh, violent religious radicals in the world Regis, to call this a battle for ideas <laughs> just try and just try and insult capitalism to like any random person on the street they will react to that worse than you if you said that god doesn't exist i swear or an ideological conflict rather than what it was i don't know like if someone says that they, that your god doesn't exist and like you like get like personally insulted by that like how shitty is your faith a war for profit on another continent within two weeks of allende's election 11 days actually a network of politicians, spies, and CEOs set to work organizing his demise. Not with ideas, but with money. Recall that the money. first step of Allende's plan was to buy foreign-owned like mines, factories, and banks, <laughs> etc., in order to keep Chilean resources and capital in what? Chile. Foreign-owned, in this case, means owned by Americans, and they didn't want to sell. To sell was to forfeit their future profits in Chile, and everyone with something to lose allied themselves against Allende. The rich. And that's the, the thing. Like the 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 problem is when you try and do things um, without resorting to violence. I'm sorry, but like if you govern, you necessarily by by the very nature of governance itself, you must enforce violence upon the people who refuse to um accept the control of the state like that's how it works governance is the um is the wielding of violence um against a group is it is the it is govern a government is the is the structure that decides who um violence is uh acted upon and for what reasons like you can't like the threat of being beat down by the police is is how most states function the threat of homelessness and and uh, other factors and starvation and all of those things those the, that is an act of violence against a group of people because we don't have to have starvation and stuff like that to make people work. We don't have to do those things. It's just violence that we enact upon people. Uh, and so if Allende um, tried to create a government which did not, um, which refused to uh, uh, use violence against the, um, you know, the previous uh, hegemony that refused to give up the land and the resources so that the people could um you know benefit then that it was always going to fall it was always going to fail right wing the spies who funneled money to them their bosses the politicians and the corporations that contributed to money. those political campaigns or had assets in chile they didn't want to sell there you are there's your battle for ideas the only answer to communism is a massive offensive for freedom. Freedom from hunger, from disease, and a victory for the ageless hope of people everywhere. Freedom from tyranny. So what did they do? Well, they exemplified those good old American land of the free virtues we hear so much about. That is, they knocked on the president's office door and asked him to pretty please yeah. depose the leader of a democratically elected... I'm, yeah, it's just like... You, yeah, I, 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 pacifism is is as much a benefit to fascism as as liberalism is. Did government on another continent, which he promptly put in his day planner. Let's back up a second. Mm, like, if, if you take the high road, they will use that against you. They do not care. They do not care. They will use anything. That they want, that they can, to um, to to take your freedoms away, even if you are trying, if you are trying to live by example. Pacifism will only work f against other pacifists. <laughs> you need to be able to um, alter your tactics. Is basically what I, what 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 the point is. And have a look at the situation in a little more detail. See, entire sectors of Chile's economy were American-owned. The banks in the capital were owned by American banks. Factories and plants were owned by American multinationals. 
hence Pepsi's interest in the country. The telephone networks were controlled by ITT, one of Nixon's big donors, and on down the line it goes. But let's focus on copper, which is, and was, Chile's main export. In 1970, 80% of the copper industry was owned by just two American companies. These companies got Chilean miners to mine the ore out of the ground, turn it into usable copper, which was then sent to American factories, where it could be put into American products, like cars and televisions, which were then, in turn, sold back to Chileans. But no surprise, most Chileans couldn't afford them. American companies got rich, American consumers and rich Chileans got their toys, and ordinary Chileans, well, they got long hours and harsh work conditions with none of the benefits, which is to say, they got fucked. This is why they elected Allende, who vowed that his interest was in their interest. Now, the USA did not have to inform Allende what would happen if he nationalized Chile's mines, factories, and banks. He was not the first to do it, and he knew full well what would happen to him, just as happened six years prior in Brazil, seven years prior in the Dominican Republic, nine years prior in Cuba, attempted at least, and 15 years prior in Guatemala, while similar interventions befell Bolivia and Uruguay during Allende's term. Well, look at that. Looks sort of like an empire. And by the way, this is only regime change up to 1973, and they were just getting started. Invasions, assassinations, and toppling governments were normal in the defense of freedom. The freedom of American freedom! corporations to profit from the metals, oil, and food extracted by low-paid workers and farmers. Estamos frente a un verdadero conflicto frontal sobre las grandes corporaciones transnacionales y los estados. Estos aparecen interferidos en sus decisiones fundamentales, políticas, económicas y militares por organizaciones globales que no dependen de ningún estado y que en la suma de sus actividades no responden ni están fiscalizadas por ningún parlamento. Or yeah. yeah, yeah, like exactly. For, this is this is another thing I just don't understand about um, people. Uh, I, I just don't understand um, when it comes to. Sorry, what what I remember. So. Why do people are people so okay with people like Elon Musk, uh, Jeff Bezos, or whoever's the CEO CEO currently of uh, Amazon and all of that? Those people didn't. No, nobody voted for them to be there. Like you have absolutely no democratic control within the company that you work at. Why are you okay with living with working under a dictatorship? You wouldn't be okay with the government working that way. Why are you okay with living in this system? It makes no sense to me. The American empire is not primarily one of military occupation. There are exceptions, of course, notably the invasion of the Dominican Republic in 1965. But normally, the empire is one of economic exploitation, as Allende knew. It's formed not by a legal agreement, but a tacit one between corporations and the state, including the CIA and military. See, it's a big risk for a corporation to set up shop in a country where, you know, a socialist might get elected. Yeah, there's the false belief is of all... Uh, the, the biggest lie that, uh, that you've been taught in your life is that of the meritocracy, that people are in power because they deserve to be. Holy shit, like, how do we, how do we like, unlearn that? That is something which all, everyone needs to fucking unlearn immediately. Question authority. Always. Then they could lose their investment. But with the wealthiest country and the largest military in the world on their side, one which will face no accountability for interfering in other states, that risk is almost entirely mitigated because they can trust that if ever such a leader was to come to power, he would be in short order either assassinated or deposed, and business can continue as usual. The U.S. military functions as the guarantor of otherwise risky investments. Of course, this gets a little more complicated when the socialists have guns of their own. Sobre la cuestión acerca de si la lucha armada es el único camino para la liberación, lo que puedo responder es que. Mm. I mean, that's the real lesson to take away from um, Cuba. 
is you need to have diversity of tactics and you need to be prepared to use the most appropriate tactic for the situation. That's it. That that's everything. That 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 is what Che taught. Por lo menos en las condiciones de nuestro país. That is no the real warfare. Y en nuestra opinión, en las condiciones de la inmensa mayoría de los países de América Latina, no hay otro camino que la lucha armada. Yeah. The U.S. executive knew Allende would be a problem years before he won, which is why every time he ran, three times prior to winning, the CIA dumped millions into his opponent's campaigns and into right-wing propaganda against him, over 40 million in today's dollars. In exchange, multinationals with interests across the continent would fund both parties of would-be presidents in the United States. It's a perfect, if illegal, symmetrical flow of capital. So, in short, they never expected Allende to actually win. After he did win, and before he took office, the CIA totally botched a coup attempt, then aggressively spent somewhere between 100 and 200 million dollars, adjusted for inflation, on this wow. country of just 10 million people, funding the right wing, the military, American-friendly business associations, and propaganda. The full amount we'll never know, as it came from a convoluted mix of corporate and taxpayer dollars. 11 days after Allende's election, a furious President Nixon had a breakfast with Donald Kendall, the CEO of Pepsi, and Augustine Edwards, one of Chile's richest men who pretty much owned the mainstream media in Chile, the Chilean Rupert Murdoch. They asked Nixon for his help in getting rid of Allende. From this meeting, Nixon marched over to CIA director Richard Helms, promising him a blank check to solve the Allende problem. Helms was given a lot of latitude, up to and including anything short of a military invasion, or what they rather brazenly called a Dominican-type action. A Dominican-type, holy crap. The CIA crap. conducted- Oh my god, that's still a territory of uh, America, right? Oh my goodness. Oh, a gosh. secret war of espionage, behind what was referred to as an invisible blockade, funding anyone who would make Allende's socialist reforms and the Cybersyn project as difficult as possible. Nixon ordered the CIA to, quote, make the economy scream. But that wasn't all he did. In public, he had the weight of the American presidency to throw around, and he did his best to ensure that no money entered Chile. He went to international banks and to the IMF and made it apparent that his office would not look kindly on anyone who lent money to Allende's government. Chile, of course, is interested in uh, obtaining uh, loans uh, from international organizations where we have a vote. Uh, and I indicated that uh, wherever we had a vote, uh, where Chile was involved, that uh, unless there were strong considerations on the other side, that we would vote against them. Chile's credit rating was downgraded for no apparent reason, such that no one in Oops. the world was willing to invest in the country for, for fear of American reprisal. Lastly, as we should expect, Nixon also cut off all U.S. government aid to Chile. Aid sounds really beneficent, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, like, the, this is the thing. It, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, co communism has always failed, has never been able to stand by itself. Yeah, it's just like interference from American government. It's like, oh, you know, no, but if they can't, if if the government, if, if it fails, then um, if, if it can't handle foreign influence, then it wasn't a good system to begin with, blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, then the same people will start crying about how government interference into, like, the free market. It's just brilliant. It's brilliant. Mm-hmm. It's called aid, but it's yet another means of American imperialism. Here's how the system works. The USA supports friendly governments. That means friendly to American companies looting their resources, not friendly. That, this, this motherfucker just managed to make, to, to like verbalize inverted commas. Friendly. friendly. So fascists are A-OK -okay by this standard. American aid goes to governments, many of which were or became military dictatorships during this decade. Dictators line their pockets with government aid and let companies get on with exploiting the working people of their countries. That's not to say it was a free lunch, however. They had to earn their aid through autocratic control, including imprisoning, torturing, and murdering those who resisted or mobilized. Meanwhile, the people, once again, didn't have schools to send their kids to, didn't have hospitals to go to. Yeah, they got f***ed. Allende's was not the only government who was unaided. Fulgencio Batista earned billions of dollars, adjusted for inflation, while he was president. Yet a quarter of the people in his country couldn't even read. 
As soon as these guys kicked him out, what do you know? No more aid to Cuba. Yet virtually everyone in the country was literate in about three years. So when you hear aid, don't think aid. Think a government to government bribe where ordinary people get nothing and leftists end up imprisoned or dead. Needless to say, Andy didn't get any of that pie. And in addition to fascists and spies, there was a third group of enemies allied against his government. Wait, America, America ruined America? Ha. The corporations. <clears throat> These are the attendees of just one meeting. Nixon's Secretary of State, William Rogers, sat down with Ford Motor Company, Bank of America, First National City Bank, Ralston Purina. He depends on me for loving care, and I depend on Purina Cat Chow to give him great taste and nutrition. Let's chow chow chow. Purina Cat Chow, you can depend on Purina Cat Chow. <laughs> Sorry, not sure how that slipped in there. Ralston Purina, ITT, and the mining companies who had their interests threatened by Allende's policies, including Anaconda Copper. Together, they were assured that action would be taken to protect their profits in Chile. I directed that an approach be made to both the State Department and Mr. Kissinger's office to tell them that we had grave concern over the outlook for ITT's investment, and we were desirous of discussing our thoughts in Washington and willing to assist financially in any government plan to help protect private American investment in Chile. This list is exemplary of who has the ear of power. This, this is, is who's conspiracy. interested. Yeah, that's what I always say. It's just like, why look for like um, conspiracy theories that can't be proven when like the, the they they don't have to come up with um, convoluted plots to control you, dudes. Um, they don't need to put fluoride in the water to do this shit. They just do it. They just do it. Rich people just do. They just do the shit. They don't care if you know or not because you can't do anything about it <laughs> you have no control you 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 you're just going to yeah you're just going to they're just going to do whatever they want and uh yeah you're going to have no control policy. none of this was done within view of congress by the way who didn't even know about it nor did the voting public this was entirely the executive branch and who gets in the room to make their voices heard and get other nations burned to the ground. This was Allende's war, one in which he had a lot of enemies and very few friends. Looking at the tilt of the board, perhaps he saw the inevitable conclusion and chose not to prevent it, choosing rather to have history judge his life and death. For instance, Fidel Castro visited Allende and toured his nationalization projects, which very much impressed him. What did not impress Castro was Allende's commitment to remain within the bounds of law, especially when they were being subverted by the enemies of social progress. For example, Allende maintained the freedom of the press, even though that press was owned by moguls like Agustin Edwards and was used as a propaganda machine for the CIA. Castro knew the value of the threat of violence and symbolically, gave Allende the Kalashnikov, which he would use, not on his enemies, but on himself. Castro, who had already by this time survived 300 CIA assassination plots, did not see Allende's commitment to the law as altruism, but as stupidity. He left yeah. Chile saying, I, I can't really all say decadent about social that. systems have defended themselves with tremendous violence. I will return to Cuba, more of a revolutionary than when I came here. Yeah. I will return to Cuba, more of a radical. Morals pale in comparison to material reality. Like, I, I'm, yeah. Cool. Mm. Than when I came here. Additionally, the Soviet Union was hesitant to financially support Allende's government, which they believed was doomed, precisely because of its commitment to constitutional rule and nonviolence. Yet Allende kept his faith to the moment of his death unwavering in the light of the world that he foresaw. That was uh, stupid of you. <laughs> Saws. By 1972, the economy was indeed screaming. Because of the corporate blockade of Chile, when machines or trucks broke down, there were no parts to fix them. An estimated third of the transportation in Chile needed repair. This was by design. The American ambassador to Chile, Edward Corey, said, not a nut, or a bolt will be allowed to reach Chile under Allende. We shall do all within our power to condemn Chile and the Chileans to utmost deprivation and poverty. 
for oh, cyber sin, from the too, server. because most computers and telecommunications equipment were manufactured by American companies, they were severely set back by a lack of resources and had to get creative. At the time, this whole program of sabotage was clandestine, run by Nixon on one front, American companies on another, and the CIA on a third. It's really difficult to run an economic simulator with all these unknown variables in play. And the computer scientists, both British and Chilean, who were programming Checo could never figure out why the numbers always came back so strangely. All of this sabotage and secret funding came to a head in October 1972 with what began as a trucker's strike. Usually, strikes are associated with the left, labor action against their employers. This one, however, was the employers against the left, protesting Allende's creation of a national trucking company that would compete with them. Owners of every mm. industry joined, closed the doors of businesses, private factories, they blocked highways and vandalized infrastructure. Violence broke out on the streets, provoked not least by right-wing fascist groups, trained, funded, and infiltrated by the CIA. The situation looked grim. But then something happened that no one had predicted. The left united behind Allende to prevent economic collapse. The workers rose up, determined not to let the owners destroy Allende's government, which had brought so much benefit to their class. Truckers drove their routes in defiance of their bosses. Factories began to correspond and share resources to keep production going. Radical left factions, who were initially opposed to Allende's moderate policies, took up arms to defend factories from sabotage by right-wing mercenary gangs. They also seized private <laughs> factories that had yeah. closed their doors by force, something Allende had refused to do. This was also Cybersyn's shining yeah. moment. Dang, it's weird, it's weird that capitalists keep supporting fascists. I wonder if that's because they're linked. Yeah, mm, I love their fascists there. I love their fascists. As the networks Flores and his team had built allowed leaders to keep in contact and keep production going, even where telephone lines were cut or highways were blocked. Without the network, October 1972 would likely have been Allende's last month in office. Unable to destroy the government as they had planned, the right and left came to a stalemate, and Allende, out of options, was forced to ask the military to intervene and end the strike. In exchange, they wanted cabinet positions in his government. He had little choice in the matter and agreed. The following year, the same uniformed men would seize control of the capital by force. Still, the October strike demonstrated the power of a united left. Despite 100 million CIA dollars, anti-Allende propaganda, and the capitalist solidarity arrayed against them. Throughout the next year, Cybersyn continued- Yeah, but in a free market system, this wouldn't happen because like, <clears throat> like, like, you know, people would see like the fascism and they wouldn't buy whatever products the fascists were making. And, and that would help somehow. To consolidate data. But eventually, the economic pressure put onto Chile was too much. Nixon had effectively prevented any foreign investment in Chile while Allende was president. Meanwhile, the CIA and business associations could continue to pour support into anti-Allende organizations, propaganda, and assure the military that the United States would look favorably on a change in leadership. Anarchist capitalism. <laughs> yeah, anarcho-capitalism is the only on way. That, this will solve the this will solve their problem all the problems because anarchy doesn't actually mean uh, to remove hierarchy. It actually means that you can do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> the military seized control of the capital and bombed the presidential palace. Refusing to be taken alive, fucking Allende shot himself. Chilean democracy ended amid the sounds of explosions, gunshots, and Allende's final words broadcast out over the radio. Oh, thanks for the follow. Reset my dopamine. Welcome to the Shady Harbor. Pagaré por mi vida la lealtad del pueblo. 
Uh, but what what did that end up doing at the end of the day, though? Like, look at look at look, look at the uh, neoliberal shock uh, shock doctrine reforms that have been imposed upon the people. Like, all of these improvements have been worked back on. Like, at the end of the day, your morality just hindered your mission. Uh, the, yeah, there's just. You can't rely on your personal, like, be personally being a moral bastion in order to run a country. I'm sorry. You got to understand that um, that violence is inevitable when you're trying to run a country. It just depends on what kind of violence you use. Tengo la certeza que la semilla que entregáramos a la conciencia digna de miles y miles de chilenos. No podrá ser cegado definitivamente. Tienen la fuerza. Podrán más allá. Hello. Pero no se detienen los Was procesos it? sociales. Oh, no, no, no. El crimen. Y con la fuerza. La historia es nuestra y la hacen los pueblos. Trabajadores de mi patria. Quiero agradecerles. But he was respectful, and I know they're seen as a great hero in American schools, and not just completely ignored him. If he brought up he was an evil communist, almost as bad as Stalin. Yeah, because because he didn't because in the end he wasn't effective. And and the things that are, f are remembered about him aren't you know the aren't the cyber cyber sin. It's it, it's the fact that he was such a good moral person, blah 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 blah, blah and not the actual material things that um, he his his government uh, brought to the people. I just I I want <clears throat> we we need we need to like be honest about like what did what did chile achieved and what does the, what does the situation in chile look like now yo solo fui intérprete de grandes anhelos de justicia que empeñó su palabra de que respetaría la constitución y la ley y así lo hizo en este momento definitivo el último en que yo pueda dirigirme a ustedes Pero que aprovechen la lección. El capital foráneo, el imperialismo, unido a la reacción, creó el clima para que las Fuerzas Armadas rompieran su tradición, la que le, la que le enseñara Schneider y que regimara el comandante Araya. Víctimas del mismo sector social que hoy estará en sus casas esperando con mano ajena reconquistar el poder para veces seguir defendiendo sus granjerías y sus privilegios. Me dirijo sobre todo a la modesta mujer de nuestra tierra, a la campesina que creyó en nosotros, a la obrera que trabajó más, a la madre que supo nuestra preocupación por los niños. Me dirijo a los profesionales de la patria, a los profesionales patriotas, a los que hace días estuvieron trabajando, contra la sedición auspiciada por los colegios profesionales, colegios de clase para defender también las ventajas de la sociedad capitalista de los pocos. Me dijo la juventud, aquellos que cantaron, entregaron su alegría y su espíritu de lucha. Me dijo al hombre de Chile, al obrero, al campesino, al intelectual, aquellos que serán perseguidos. It's definitely like definitely like the things that we need to take away from this isn't that he went down as believing in his beliefs, which you know that's cool and all in like anime and cartoons and stuff. Like that's really cool. But what we really need to be taking away from this is how fucking amazing that uh, that how amazing things are when we run thing when we run societies using a scientific um, method. Right, it's the most important thing, and we need to focus on using using the tactics that work in the moment, using the um, using what we have at our hands. Like that, that's it. That's what needs to be remembered. 
cortando las líneas férreas, destruyendo los oleoductos y los gasoductos, frente al silencio de que tenían la obligación de la historia lo juzgará. Seguramente Radio Magallanes será callado. Y el mitad tranquilo de mi voz no llegará a ustedes. No importa. The calm metal of my voice. Brutal. Lo seguiría no tiempo. Siempre estaré junto a ustedes. Por lo menos mi recuerdo que era el hombre mío que fue leal. El pueblo debe defender. <laughs> Oh, I, I'm not, and, and I'm not saying he did anything wrong. I think, I think that, um, yeah, America is, it, America is the one that did the fucking wrong thing here. It's just insane. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know if it's foolishness. Like, I, I do think that uh, following, you know, being stick, sticking to your guns is like an important thing to be. And I don't think that uh, he approached the situation um, wrong that he found himself in. Um, it's just, yeah, other stuff, I guess. I, I, yeah, I, I, I think that more could have been done to um, to prevent the situation. But like hindsight is twenty twenty, <laughs> we can only learn from the past, and that, and that's it. We can't really like say that he would have known this would have happened. I mean, like, it, I mean, like he knew this would happen eventually, but um, you know, yeah. Este momento gris y amargo, donde la traición la tendré por él. Llegan ustedes sabiendo que mucho más temprano que tarde, de nuevo, abrirán las grandes alamedas por donde pasé el hombre mío para construir una sociedad mejor. ¡Viva Chile! ¡Viva el pueblo! ¡Vivan los trabajadores! Estas fueron mis últimas palabras. Y tengo la certeza de que mi sacrificio no se les pago. Yeah. With General Pinochet in power, thousands of leftists were killed. Hundreds of thousands were yeah. kidnapped, arrested, imprisoned, and tortured. A secret cable from the White House from two days after Allende's death read, the United States government wishes to make clear its desire to cooperate with the military junta and to assist in any appropriate way. We welcome General Pinochet's expression of desire for strengthened ties between Chile and the US. Among those imprisoned was Fernando Flores, Beer fled the country, but used his international network, working with human rights organizations, to get his former colleagues out of Pinochet's prison camps. Flores nice. would eventually be released and move to California, where he'd study and start a career as a business consultant. The Chilean economy was given over to the Chicago Boys, a group of economists who had studied under Milton Friedman. Oh, yeah. They yeah, 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 yeah. So, th so this is, uh, this, you know, like, it's really interesting like i just and i just realized this chile was the chile might, might have been like the um the testing ground for both um the benefits of the the, the you know left wing um experiment of centralized government and using cybernetics um and milton friedman the inventor of uh, the shock doctrine or the shock um uh shock reforms like they th there is a th th there's a direct connection between mk ultra and the chicago school and the way that they um just completely destroyed the nation to try and build it anew using uh, neoliberal reforms and you can just see the destruction in all of this. It's um, yeah, it's 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 crazy how 
fuck this is you know the birthplace of um centralized and scientific uh so scientific based um centralized government and also the birthplace of uh shock doctrine uh re neoliberal reforms they set to work rolling back all of Allende's reforms including cutting government programs reprivatizing factories selling farmland to giant agribusiness multinationals and of course first freezing the wages of chilean workers then abolishing the minimum wage they invited back the American multinationals with open arms. It is claimed by some that they saved Chile, which is, in one manner of speaking, true. They saved it from Chileans and returned it to those who designed the crisis in the first place. Yeah. While funding to public housing... Like, like the, the make no mistake, the um, neoliberal ransacking of uh, Chile was uh, by design. Like, that was the point. The point was to destroy the com the country and sell off its pieces, just like just like a private equity firm would do to a company. Only they did it to a country and its people. Healthcare and education were slashed. Poverty increased. Public utility... And, and, and people say that they did something good, like, this did not improve the lives of the general of the average chilean it just made rich Ch chileans um more rich it, may, it might have uh it might look from the outside like it improved you know gdp or something like that or like profits in com countries right but in actuality what you've got there is why can't i get underneath where am i supposed to put this 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 thing where is this what the what? Gee, fuck. The Windvale Founder's Tomb. I'm supposed to put a candle down, but I can't find a place to put a candle. What the fuck? Okay. Is there like an underground entrance somewhere? That's weird. And annoying. Hmm. Right here. Like, oh, oh, here. Do I not have? I might not have a candle. Okay. These were sold off to the highest bidder, and foreign investment could finally return. Investments now protected by the soldiers and armored cars of a military regime in the streets. Cyber-socialism was dead, assassinated, only after to appear as a ghost, as it does here, only as a partial body, half in this world and half in some other one. Our world is that one where the heads of state mediate in secret between corporations and spies, where they say one thing in public, another in private, and where cynicism is far that, more reasonable. No, I disagree with that. They do everything in public because the public can't do fuck all about it, and the public d believes that they're that they deserve to because they worked hard to get there. <laughs> they don't bother. The corporations don't bother to say anything in secret. What are you talking about? Enough of this conspiracy bullshit. They're bold in faith, Salvador Allende kept faith, and in the face of all he had witnessed, still chose sacrifice instead of compromise. Not for this world, but for that other one that has not appeared. In his death, he leapt from our world of noxious imperial machines, of secrets, and of reductive repetition. Cyber-socialism is dead, still. Shattered. But each of its pieces is still here. For the time being, mechanized to spy, to guide missiles, to deliver, to give you more of the same thing you had yesterday, and to serve the same conspiratorial interests that brought it down back then. Just as they were 50 years ago, we're still left with a question of design. The design not only of machines, but also of futures, and the machines that make futures. Yeah. You have the capitalist, uh, the capitalist um, introduction of the destruction of countries and corporations and people's lives in order to um, uh, suck the... Um, 
the wealth out of uh, the individual, the destruction of the individual in order to um, basically uh, increase the wealth of other individuals. And then you have uh, on the other side, the socialist um, the socialist goal of using science and material analysis to improve the lives of the individuals and society as a whole, to empower the individual to uh, to to access basic human rights. They're not all bad, Bunny Libeno, when it comes to good people who go to college to study economics. I've got a friend who's a uh who went who studied um accounting and uh, he he's not he's not lost If all we remember of Allende was that he was a moral person, then I am sorry to say, but his sacrifice was in vain. In my opinion. But yeah, that was really cool. Um, interesting stuff that they brought up uh, in the end as well. Um, I would have done a better intro though, like because that was really hard to pass. <laughs> um, support the original creator as always, and uh, yeah, like and subscribe. To them if I'm not already I should probably do that yay yep I did it I liked and subscribed um yeah that was pretty cool um gosh yes I know I'm getting hit Chilling. There we go. No, I'm not doing a play on words. It's not what's happening here. Bye bye, zombie. Alright. Knight of the Golden Prince. Knight of the Golden Prince. Don't know why I'm using this awful, awful fucking accent. Don't know he even was what his accent is. He brought... Okay, sure he did. Oh, you didn't even see me. Well. Nothing down here, is there? Nothing but junk in these trunks. Hey -o. Ooh. Did someone actually do a mod for him? on dude ah spooky sheath your weapon mortal slay these blood slay them sir grandin 
Okay, cool. We slayed something. All right, we need to rescue the subdued spirits by slaying people. Why did I... Why did my character do a stupid thing? have ended and I can think again. I must attend to my lords. Maybe over here? Oh, there's one. My thoughts are once again my own, thanks to you. Yes, they are. I'm amazing. Ow, fuck you. Thank you, champion. Your help is greatly appreciated. Sir Gamidam. Wait, where's Sir Gamidam? Without your aid, we'd be slaves, forced oh. by the Bloodthorns to smite our own descendants. Even kings may bend a knee to those they honor. Have we your leave? Farewell, Mort. Servants of ancient kings. Okay. Good stuff. Can I level up? No. It is ten oh nine where I am here. Um, yeah. So that'll be it for me today. Tomorrow, I think that I might uh, have a look at that how to maybe criticize Israel uh, video. I think that might be fun to to have a react. Um, in other, in any case, um, until I see you next, take care of yourself, take care of yourself, and take care of someone else. Yeah. Love y'all. Bye-bye.